today, Shell offloading all of its assets in a top U.S. oil-producing region, which American company is benefiting. Google spending big on physical office space in New York City, even as many companies promote work from home. And video conferencing app Zoom wants to buy an American company, but U.S. authorities are reviewing the deal. What are they so worried about? That and much more coming up on NTD Business. Good evening. Great to have you with us. I'm Paul Graney. The U.S. current account deficit hit a 14-year high in the second quarter, up half a percent to over $190 billion. Americans are importing more foreign goods than ever before, so that means foreigners are stocking up on American real estate, government debt, or other investments in return. And are we buying this stuff on credit? U.S. household debt rose over $300 billion in the second quarter to nearly $15 trillion. Demand for U.S.-made products is high, but manufacturers are struggling to find the talent to build it. And U.S. single-family home building fell fell for a second straight month in August. Builders are still struggling with shortages of materials and labor. Single-family starts account for the largest share of the housing market. It dropped almost 3% last month. The decline, though, was offset by a surge in multifamily home building, So overall, housing starts were up about 4% for the month. The number of houses authorized for construction but not yet started also rose to a record high, a sign builders are perhaps reluctant to take on new projects. One economist at Wells Fargo says even though lumber prices have fallen recently, those lower prices haven't made their way to home builders. Also, other building materials remain in short supply like windows, even cabinets. So as the United States plans to lift travel bans from tourists from most parts of the world later this year, I'm sure the American tourism industry is breathing a collective sigh of relief. So here to discuss is two of the industry's top experts. We have McLean Robbins of Lily Pond Travel and Terry Suero of Toka Travel Agency. Guys, pleasure to have you on the show. Thanks so much for coming on. McLean, maybe we can go to you first. How are you guys feeling about the lifting the travel ban and you think it's a big boon for the for the industry i do thanks so much for having me today i think it's a really big boon and i think it's helping travelers breathe a sigh of relief that great things are to come on the horizon so yes i think it's very positive for the industry and for travelers overall Mm -hmm. terry anything to add oh i I would agree first of all thanks for having us also here um and I would agree with my claim, it's definitely positive news for uh, our industry and for our travelers. Uh, but there is a little sense of trepidation just because the news keeps on changing a lot. And that's one of the things that we keep on hearing from our uh, clients is, you know, what is going on and good, bad, bad, good. Uh, but obviously, good is good news. So uh, that's where we are right now. Mm-hmm. McLean, how has this year been so far? How's business? You know, business is great. I was very lucky. I focus exclusively in the luxury sector. I've added six new travel designers to my team in 2021 and have more on the way um, and exceeded my 2019 numbers by May of this year. So business is booming. People are more eager than ever to travel. And I think they benefit from the help of an experienced luxury travel advisor. As, As Terry pointed out, there are significantly more questions and definitely a little bit more consternation about traveling internationally. So having an expert at your side can definitely help smooth the process, ease your concerns, and make your travel experience a great one so that you're eager to come back and travel more in 22 and beyond. Can you give us an idea of what kind of trips people are looking for or where are the trends? Yeah, absolutely. I think at the beginning of this year, everybody was just really eager to get away. So we did a lot of domestic trips, a lot of easy drive market staycations. But broadly, by the spring, people were ready and eager to get on a plane, particularly as vaccines rolled out. So we did a lot of Caribbean, a lot of Mexico, a lot of warm weather beach vacations so people could just breathe that sigh of relief. I personally took my first trip to Turks and Caicos in June, and it was just really, really nice after a year of being cautious to get out and to Uh, you know, see the world again. And then broadly this summer, I had about half of my travelers ready to go to Europe and ready to take those longer, further flung vacations, many more planning them for 22. And this fall, although the Delta variant has definitely caused a little bit of consternation, as Terry points out, I think we're still seeing people fairly eager to travel and retain their schedules. They're just doing so with a little bit more caution. 
Very good. Great to hear. Terry, you've been all across the world. How about the last couple of years? Have you managed to, to, to get away or have you been doing more domestic travel? Yeah. yeah, we have actually uh, myself personally and also our staff. We made a point uh, to visit the different markets. Uh, and even though we haven't been actively promoting travel within our client base, uh, we have been taking clients who wanted to go somewhere. So they came to us, we did. And part of that is uh, that uh, we're, uh, we sink our reputation highly. And right now with everything that's been going on last year, we felt that our expertise, which has really been in travel design, uh, not necessarily in healthcare design. Uh, so we want to make sure we safeguard our, our brand from that. That being said, we visited a lot of different uh, uh, countries, and what we found that was amazing is how different markets are, uh, how resilient some of them are, and uh, somehow others are not that resilient. McLean, Terry, best of luck for the rest of the year. We'll have you back again soon. Thanks so much. Cheers. Thanks so much for having us. Thank you. An airline maker, Boeing, says its revenue in Europe will come mostly from low-cost airlines over the next 20 years. That's despite Europe's biggest low-cost carrier, Ryanair, cancelling an order recently because the price was too high. Here's Entity's Evelyn Lee with aviation business expert David Noletti. Boeing says it's going to be Europe's low-cost carriers that will drive demand for planes in the next 20 years. Joining me now is aerospace expert and managing director at Riveron, David Naledi. It's great to see you, David. Great to see you. So what do you think about the statement? It's going to be budget airlines that's going to be spending the most? I think that's, that's uh, going to be true globally, not just in Europe. Uh, we're going to see the low-cost carriers uh, consume a lot of the aircraft that are going to be produced. Boeing's 20-year uh, forecast predicts over 32,000 single-aisle aircraft over the next 20 years. Uh, so 80, 80% or 70% of the aircraft that are going to be delivered will be the 737 and A320 style aircraft that uh, Boeing and Airbus produce currently. They're intended for shorter routes, domestic routes, or maybe intra-regional routes in Europe or in Asia. And the, the forecast uh, was pretty clear that Asia will consume the major or, or, or the most aircraft um, and North America and, and Europe will consume quite a few aircraft as well, but we're going to see tremendous fleet growth in Asia uh, with single-aisle aircraft. But what does that say about the low-cost carriers or the development of them? Does that mean we will see significant growth from them? I think it does. We'll see low-cost carriers like Ryanair and others continue to grow. Uh, a lot of the travel that's going to be uh, developed will be leisure travel and uh, as opposed to business travel and the leisure travelers are going to look for low-cost carriers and it's a very uh, efficient cost-efficient way of traveling and they're going to uh, drive that that business model quite strongly over the next 20 years as those markets develop by 2040 boeing predicts that'll be over 49,000 aircraft so the total fleet will have almost doubled and of those new ones uh, 32,000 of them are going to be single aisle aircraft that they think will go to low-cost carriers and other carriers that operate those shorter routes. It's huge growth. And what does that say about the competition between uh, low-cost carriers and full-service carriers? I think it's going to be a very competitive market as competitors try and gain market share and a loyal customer following. You know, the, the low-cost carriers are obviously uh, focused on, on delivering people from, to their destinations inexpensively. Um, and the full service carriers are catering to much more of the business crowd or people that are more interested in amenities. Uh, but it's going to be very, very tough competition, particularly amongst the low cost carriers to, to uh, get that market share. All right. That is very interesting. Thank you very much, David. You're welcome. Have a great day. You too. All right. Back to you, Paul. Thanks, Evelyn. And Johnson & Johnson says a booster shot of its own COVID-19 vaccine gives elevated protection against the virus. The company just released data from its phase three clinical trials. The trials show that a second shot provides 75% protection against symptomatic COVID-19 globally. It also says antibody levels rise four to six times higher when given two months after the first shot. The full data set wasn't released. Johnson & Johnson says it plans to submit it for publication in a peer-reviewed journal soon. 
BMW and Mercedes maker Daimler are being sued for refusing to speed up the shift to zero emission vehicles. A German activist group says it filed the legal action yesterday, which seems to be the first time German citizens have sued private companies over the climate. Other activists, including Greenpeace, plan a similar case against Volkswagen. The move comes after Germany's top court last year. It tightened emission standards. Now the case demands that the firm set a 2030 date for phasing out combustion engine vehicles and take steps to limit their emissions before that. BMW and Daimler say they haven't accepted the demands, though Daimler does aim to produce only EVs by 2030. BMW wants half its sales to be electric by then. If the two firms lose, more cases are expected against other companies like airlines or energy providers. An American energy company, ConocoPhillips, is buying all of Royal Dutch Shell's Permian Basin assets, includes around 225 net acres comes as oil companies are pressured to divest their oil assets. Anthony's Don Ma has the details. Royal Dutch Shell is selling all of its Permian Basin assets to ConocoPhillips for $9.2 billion in cash. This includes 600 miles of crude gas and water pipelines and infrastructure. There's this political uh, layer being added to these investment decisions. The European companies in particular are trying to divest of existing older fossil fuel assets. Brent Bennett is the policy director for Life Powered. At the Texas Public Policy Foundation, he says investor and regulatory pressures over social and environmental issues are pushing fossil fuel companies toward lower carbon investments. For Shell, Permian Basin might not be as much of a core asset to say what they're doing as their you know, assets in the North Sea, right, which is close to their home base or other investments that they have. Bennett says Shell is more of an offshore developer and ConocoPhillips is more of an onshore developer. ConocoPhillips CEO Ryan Lance says, We are very excited to enhance our position in one of the best basins in the world with the addition of Shell's high-quality assets. Meanwhile, Shell's upstream director, Whale Sawan, says this deal reflects our focus on value over volumes as well as disciplined stewardship of capital. Shell says it will give $7 billion out of the $9.5 billion to shareholders, with the remainder used for further strengthening in its balance sheet. Don Ma, NTD News. And stocks ended near flat today after their sell-off yesterday. The Dow falling 51 points or less than two-tenths of a percent, S&P 500 losing four points, and the Nasdaq, though, adding 33 points today, about two-tenths of a percent. Investors are now waiting for tomorrow's Fed meeting, which may shed light on when the Fed's massive purchase of government debt may begin to ease. And Google is planning to buy a nice new office building in New York City for about $2 billion. Other tech companies are also investing in prime real estate, even as hybrid work models become more common. Google says it will complete the deal for the St. John's Terminal site in New York City in the first quarter of next year. Google currently leases the site. The investment comes at a time when most Google employees are actually working remotely, don't even have to come to the office till at least January. But tech giants have been taking advantage of lower office building prices across the United States. U.S. regulators are reviewing Zoom's purchase of an American company, citing national security concerns over the company's ties to China, according to a letter posted on the FCC's website. In July, Zoom reached a $15 billion deal to buy customer service software company 59. A group led by the Justice Department is now reviewing the deal with the DOJ, saying there might be national security risk from foreign ownerships and relationships related to China. It asked the FCC to put Zoom's deal on hold until the review is done. It's also facing mounting privacy and security concerns. After research reports revealed in some cases, its encryption keys were being transmitted to servers in China. And top casino executives in Macau have met authorities in the world's biggest gambling hub. They want details and a proposed regulatory crackdown but have received little in the way of answers. Kira Lee reports. The world's biggest gambling hub wants answers. Senior Macau casino and junket executives met with authorities on Monday and demanded details on a proposed regulatory crackdown. 
Macau's government kicked off a regulatory overhaul on September the 14th, sending shares in casinos plunging, especially as the city's lucrative casino licenses are up for rebidding next year. The meeting was the only official opportunity for the industry to air its views during a 45-day gaming consultation. Macau authorities have identified nine areas of potential change. They include having government representatives supervise daily casino operations. Casino firm Galaxy told the meeting the company wanted more information on several areas, including the introduction of government representatives, junket operators, middlemen who bring in wealthy Chinese gamblers to Macau were more vocal. They want details on amendments to criminalize accepting cash deposits, currently a common practice. Authorities are due to hold four more consultations, all with the public, in October. It's still to come this evening. FedEx is raising its shipping rates in over the next few months. Find out how much deliveries are expected to go up. One of the largest shopping malls in the, New York, in the United States tries something new to attract customers. Is betting that luxury and entertainment can reverse the e-commerce trend. That and more after the short break. I'm Mike Lindell, inventor of MyPillow. Thanks to your support, you've helped make MyPillow become one of the fastest growing companies in America. Over the last 12 years, you've helped MyPillow create thousands of jobs right here in the USA. When I got MyPillow, I'm asleep almost immediately. I stay asleep at night and I wake up more well rested in the morning. That's why I invented my pillow. My patented fill adjusts to your exact individual needs and helps keep your neck supported and aligned. I'm interrupting this commercial right now. Retailers have canceled my pillow. And to thank you for your support, I'm going to pass the savings directly on to you. For example, you get my six piece towel sets, regular $109.99, now only $44.98. Or my pillow dog beds for as low as $19.99 with your promo code. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com. The final answer. The end of mankind. The end of this wretched world. I came as a man of peace and the world bought it. Can you believe that? They even took the mark of the beast. <laughs> Fools! Why did God even make human beings? To glorify his name. But we were fools. And many will spend eternity in hell. May God have mercy on their souls. But fools are fools are fools. Satan loves fools. And so do I. Welcome back. It's going to cost a little more to send stuff with FedEx soon. The company announced its shipping rates are going up in January. The heights apply to all U.S. domestic and U.S. export and import services. Home delivery is expected to go up nearly 6%, while freight customers may see an increase of almost 8%. FedEx says these price bumps, quote, reflect incremental costs associated with the challenging operating environment. FedEx customers might also start paying more this year. In November, some FedEx shipments will have a fuel surcharge. It's been 100 years since Manhattan had a whiskey distillery, since the time of Prohibition. But tapping into the spirit's resurgent popularity, Great Jones Distilling Company just changed that. Lisa Bernhardt has the details. 
Immerse yourself in whiskey. That's pretty much the requirement when entering Great Jones Distilling Company, Manhattan's first whiskey distillery in 100 years. The 28,000 square foot complex was six years in the making and faced many obstacles along the way, including just finding the property itself, says project manager Andrew Marinoff. Uh, in order to understand what distilling is in New York City, you have to understand the zoning that it takes to, to be in a distillery. So we're in an M15 zone in which there are only 122 buildings in New York City that allow that operation. We know that because we saw every single one of them. At the heart of Great Jones, where the magic happens, a 500 gallon pot or still where the whiskey is distilled, or simply put, where a harder alcohol is made from a lower alcohol base. But while having that much alcohol in the middle of a four story New York City building may seem dicey, Marinoff says not to worry. And the room that this still is encased in is completely explosion proof. Uh, the air can be sucked out of it in 90 seconds, making it one of the safest distilling rooms in the world. Great Jones is Manhattan's first whiskey distillery since the days of prohibition, when the sale of alcohol was outlawed across the U.S. It's the brainchild of Juan Domingo Beckman, who, despite coming from the family that owns Jose Cuervo Tequila, is tapping into the recent whiskey craze, with bourbon in particular surging in popularity. The distillery includes a cocktail bar, restaurant, event space, and, of course, a speakeasy. And Samuel Adams is releasing a new limited edition beer that many won't be able to buy. It'll be so potent that it'll be illegal to sell in more than a dozen states. The beer company releases the new version of its Utopias brand every couple of years, but this year it won't be sold in 50 states. The new brew will contain 28% alcohol by volume. That's more than five times the potency of typical beers. The company says it's only making around 13,000 bottles. For those who will be able to buy it, it'll cost you $240 for a 25-ounce bottle. It'll be available for purchase October 11th. And shopping malls are hoping to get back to normal soon. They reverse the trend toward online shopping. One mall is focusing on luxury brands and entertainment to draw customers back. And the Andrew Thomas has the story. American Dream in East Rutherford, New Jersey is one of the largest shopping malls in the United States. And it just unveiled its new luxury wing Friday. It's always been our dream to introduce the luxury wing to the community at large. And certainly the pandemic put us a little behind schedule, but we're thrilled to be able to actually introduce it to everybody. Called The Avenue, the section features stores like Saks Fifth Avenue and Hermes, exotic fish ponds and sculptures. I think what's changed through the pandemic is just this, I'd say, obsession we have on ensuring that our shopping experience involves all options for customers who want to shop in-store, who want to shop virtually, who want to shop at home. The mall's future remains uncertain, after the pandemic forced it to close its doors for seven months, losing some key retail partners that either went bankrupt or left. Even before the pandemic, many malls suffered from declines in foot traffic, as shoppers moved away from physical stores in favor of shopping online. The pandemic only accelerated the trend to e-commerce. We also have added a slew of services that allow you to shop anytime, anywhere, it, maybe if you're not comfortable yet coming to a big center like American Dream. To help draw customers, American Dream diversified. The mall includes an indoor theme park, water park, ski slope, and ice skating rink, among other attractions. Andrew Thomas, NTD News. And one tourist hotspot in Croatia is back to business as usual, according to workers in the industry there. The city is once again welcoming large crowds of visitors. And the Andrew Thomas brings us this one too. Beaches are busy, and so are guided tours around the ancient walled city of Dubrovnik, Croatia. Tourism workers say the summer season has by far exceeded all expectations. When we compare this season to the last one, obviously, it's much more better. 2020, it's almost like it never happened. Uh, simply, we started uh, late, and obviously the season already has been cut short uh, mid-August. So we are now kind of already enjoying that extended period compared to uh, 2020. So it's much better. The tourism board says Croatia has welcomed 9 million people so far in 2021. 
Tourism usually accounts for 19% of Croatia's GDP. Some pandemic measures are still in place, like masks. They're mandatory indoors. As far as I know, masks are not obligatory for obviously working outside, but we obviously try to keep social distance when possible. For example, when we are entering certain buildings like museums, obviously we are all putting our masks. Uh, when it comes to working with the cruise ships, there are again different set of rules. Uh, it's much more strict. Last year, a surge in infections cut the summer tourism season short. By mid-August, many visitors left, fearing possible quarantines in their home countries. One waiter says the huge number of tourists this year has come as a surprise. Uh, but this year we have uh, lots of people. We work a little bit more because we were not prepared uh, regarding the human resources. Over the past month, the country has seen a rise in new cases. And a huge sign about health measures reminds visitors that the pandemic isn't quite over yet. Andrew Thomas, NTD News. That's the latest business updates for today, but you can still catch NTD Evening News with Stephanie Cox. That's at 6.30 p.m. Eastern. For NTD Business, that's all for today. Thank you for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.